so my name is Jeff Lundin. I'm a professor here at the University of Ottawa. I owe a lot to Bob, much like many of you. Uh, I owe my job to Bob because my job was created because Bob came to the university. Uh, so to start off with, I just want to warn you that we're going off schedule a little bit. Uh, many of you know that there was uh, heavy fog at the airport last night, so some of the flights were delayed, so we've had to reschedule things. Uh, so, but to start off with, we are uh, going to go with the schedule, and that's going to be uh, some words from family and friends. And uh, first up, I'd like to welcome James Boyd, who is uh, Bob's brother. Is James around? Yep. Oh, there he is. Good. Why don't you come up? Hey, uh, good afternoon. Um, so thank you uh, for inviting me today, and uh, thank you all for, for joining Bob uh, on you know, a day that I know is very important to him. Um, I thought I'd share some childhood memories, um, and, um, but that's a little bit difficult to do, only because Bob was born in 1948. Uh, I was born in 1961. And so if you do the math there, that's uh, 13 years, and Bob went off to college a year early. Um, so most of my remembrances from, were from about the age of three until the age of four. Uh, but uh, that's, I'll do my best. Um, so uh, these memories are from the very early years, and then a uh, few of them from uh, summers coming home, right, from college. Um, and so my first remembrance uh, was um, Bob being very passionate about learning new skills. And I think, um, you know, per some of the uh, photos that you just saw up here, you can see that that stayed with him for his life. Uh, but uh, honestly, my uh, one of my initial memories was Bob trying to learn how to stand on his head. And he was very passionate and very determined to learn how to stand on his head. Um, and he got quite good at it, actually, by cheating, right, and uh, doing it up against the wall. But I think ultimately he did manage a good 10 seconds standing on his head. Um, second memory I had uh, was uh, Bob was in high school on the cross-country uh, running team. And so he used to go uh, running around the block in the evening. And um, he decided that um, it might be fun to try running barefoot around the neighborhood in the dark. Uh, and I remember my mother saying, Bob, uh, Actually, Bobby, because that was her name for Bob. Bobby, don't do that because you're going to step on glass and cut your foot. And Bob said, that's ridiculous, that won't happen. And half an hour later, he came back asking for a Band-Aid and for help on pulling glass out of his foot. Um, I remember that he had uh, two best friends uh, in high school uh, whose names were Paul Leifer and Don Ewell. Wilbur. Uh, no, I remember a guy named Ewell. But he was in college. All right. Okay. Um, and I remember uh, Bob would, uh, you know, bring his two friends by and uh, Paul Leifer was always uh, my favorite because he was nice to, you know, five-year-old me. Um, but I remember that Don Ewell was my mother's favorite uh, because he always wore nice, clean tennis sneakers. Yes, <laughs> uh, I remember that Bob had a summer job uh, working uh, in the steel mills on the south side of Buffalo. Uh, Bethlehem Steel, and uh, he worked uh, shoveling coal into a blast furnace. And I remember him coming home one day uh, looking like a big charred hunk of coal. And um, so that may explain why Bob still thinks of himself to this day as a big hunk. <laughs> uh, 
All right, and then uh, kind of a final memory uh, was Bob coming home uh, for the summer uh, after maybe his junior year or perhaps his senior year in college around 1968 or 1969. Uh, and uh, he had done something unusual over the previous eight months or so, and that was he turned into a hippie. Uh, so he had long hair and a beard, and he drove in on a motorcycle. And I remember my uh, father being not at all happy with that, but I remember me thinking, wow, that's really cool. All right, so after that, uh, Bob went off to California. Um, you know, I you know, uh, grew up in, in Tonawanda, New York, and then I followed in Bob's footsteps uh, off to MIT, but by that time, you know, he was uh, off in California. Uh, but after uh, I graduated uh, from Northwestern with my master's, I got a job offer uh, back to Kodak in Rochester. Uh, so we were reunited uh, for um, a time uh, as Bob's uh, young kids were, were growing up. Um, over the years, uh, as you know, uh, family commitments and careers got busier and busier, uh, we drifted apart somewhat. Uh, but over the last few years, Bob and I make a point to meet regularly for happy hours. And uh, yeah, I can honestly say I really look forward to those, Bob. And uh, I just want to conclude by saying I'm very proud of your work. So thank you. So next up uh, is John Boyd, who is uh, Bob's son. Oh, here he comes. Hey, uh, good afternoon, everybody. John Boyd. Uh, I'm really, uh, this is a, a truly a treat. Uh, thanks, to everybody, for, for coming and uh, to celebrate my father's uh, 70, 70 years uh, on this planet. And obviously, for all the people who you know, put some presentations together and, uh, and making this event happen. Um, I have to say, uh, yeah, just hearing the different stories from you guys, and uh, it's just great blast from the past. A lot of uh, names I've not seen and heard and pictures uh, for, for many years. Um, I did kind of want to piggyback on a previous uh, speech um, that was given, I think, Jonathan Leach. I, I forget, if, I don't know if he's still in the room, but uh, yeah, there's some, 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 uh, some quotes, some top quotes from my father. And... Uh, Yes, yeah, not, not to story duel you by any means. I think there's no better way to understand uh, this unique man uh, through the lens of both a protege and, a, and progeny. Uh, so I'd like to start with maybe the, the first one, and, and you'll have to confirm the, the accuracy. I think this goes back to the 80s uh, with, with uh, I think, Dan Gauthier and uh, Alex Gaeta. There was a story, uh, as the story goes, uh, my father was going through the uh, first day syllabus uh, you know, requirements, finals, whatever it may be. Um, asked before the lecture, hey, is there any questions? Uh, hands go up. Uh, will there be any uh, equations that we need to memorize for the course throughout, throughout the semester? You know, my father, uh, as the story goes, you know, looks to the sky, uh, you know, furrows his brow, you know, squints his nose. And, no, no, you don't have to memorize anything. Starts his lecture. First equation. Of course, all the hands go up there. Oh, Professor Boyd, Professor Boyd, you said we don't have to memorize any equations. And he said, no, you don't have to memorize them. You have to know them. And, and I love this quote because it talks about his passion uh, and his intellectual curiosity. You don't memorize things. You, you know them. You learn them. Uh, I, I really appreciate that one. And that, that definitely stuck with me uh, uh, throughout my life. I think the second uh, quote, uh, and I'm sure many of you have heard this before, uh, and I think it speaks to a lot of what these other people have uh, spoken about today, about his, uh, his, his joie de vie and his enjoyment of being around friends and, and celebrating. Uh, and uh, well, uh, who knows, maybe it's uh, built into our DNA, but I think perhaps uh, there's a good chance it, it was really uh, ossified during his time at MIT. Uh, he could not tell us. Uh, about the mascot of MIT without explaining that it is the beaver, and we all know that the beaver is the engineer of the animal kingdom, and the MIT student is the animal of the engineer kingdom. And so that, <laughs> that one also stayed with me. 
Now, uh, his passion for uh, physics and science, um, it didn't, uh, it pretty much permeated every element of uh, my, my childhood, you know, and unfortunately, uh, my sister Jessica, she could not be here. Uh, she, she's, she's en route, she got a little delayed. Um, but, you know, th there were so many times where, you know, uh, the, well, the, the concepts, physicists, PhD students, even the mundane questions of what's for dinner. Um, and there would be in, uh, many moments, times, evenings when we'd have fish, and my father would say, we are having Marlin for dinner. But it's not what you think. We have not invited Marlin over to attend. Marvin Scully will not be here, nor is he being cooked in a vat with cream sauce and uh, butter uh, at 350. Um, so everybody uh, in my father's honor, we will have Marlin Scully at the afternoon sessions, okay? But whatever, regardless of how hungry you get, you know, don't, don't eat them, okay? Save your, <laughs> save your appetite for the dinner afterwards. Uh, in addition, the, you know, we couldn't have a, just a conversation at the table without my father saying, hearing anything that had to do with physics or science and say, oh, oh, you know, uh, you mean, you know, insert name here, the physicist, you know? Um, of course, we had no idea. We, we, we knew one physicist, you know, uh, Robert Boyd, you know? But if we were talking about the actor Christian Slater or the world-renowned uh, surfer uh, Kelly Slater or even the uh, character from the children's television show uh, Saved by the Bell, A.C. Slater, my father would be saying, Slater, the physicist, John C. Slater? How, of course, who's, who's, yes, of course, exactly, yes. Uh, you know. Right, without him, you know, uh, where would we be, right? And so, no, no, uh, we just learned very early on to just smile and, and move on. Uh, I think the, be <laughs> the best one, though, was, and man, I wish my sister was here. Uh, me and my brother were just really just, we were probably, you know, I was a tween, she was an early teenager. Uh, we had caught wind of her uh, new, uh, of her new crush, and it happened to be uh, the name of, of a young man named Albert Snell. And my father says, oh, yeah, Wilbert Snellius, oh, I cannot believe my daughter a chip off the old block. The apple has not fallen far from the tree. You have a crush on Wilbert Snellius. Yes, exactly, the law of, of refraction of light. Uh, yes, uh, so nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> And last but not least, my favorite quote. Um, uh, I've gotten so many mileage, mileage after, uh, off of this one. And um, as I know there are, uh, throughout today, there's been quite the uh, discussion of my father's uh, fashion. And uh, in his later age, uh, he has become uh, a bit of a fashionista. Uh, but it was not always like this, right? Uh, you know, he was the, the original hipster, uh, but he wasn't, you know, ironic, you know, by any means in his fashion. And uh, I remember this was, again, like in my, you know, tweens, you know, uh, early to teenage years, and, you know, we were kind of becoming a little more self-conscious about uh, clothes and whatnot, and uh, I remember asking my father, you know, hey, you know, like all my buddies, you know, we, we, we've pivoted from, from, from briefs to boxers, you know, because uh, that's the cool thing to do. And I asked my father, you know, just, you know, <laughs> point blank. <laughs> Diane already knows the punchline. I said, Dad, um, what gives? Why do you wear tidy whities <laughs> And you know, he furrows his brow and uh, looks to the sky, squinches his nose, and he says, now John, who we all know, my underwear is neither tight nor white. <laughs> That's it. Uh, have a good day. I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Those are great stories. Uh, okay, so next up is Maria Schnitzler, who is a long uh, time uh, administrative assistant to Bob Boy, but also a long time family friend. There's a lot of people here, and this is a big room. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I've been the other woman in Dr. Boyd's life for several decades. <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Diane. <laughs> and as with most people that spend a lot of time together, you could read each other's mind 
when Dr. Boyd would stop by my office to say hello, I would respond with, we have money. <laughs> Dr. Boyd helped me with achieving one of my bucket list items. One morning, he shouted to come to his office and to get there fast. Being put out, I wondered what fire I needed to put out. Well, it was a fire, or at least an office full of smoke and something burning. I've always wanted to pull one of those red fire switches, and I got to do it. <laughs> it has been mentioned before, Dr. Boyd is a very snazzy dresser, from his tie, shirt, jacket, and hat. Always a hat. And it was my job to guess if he was channeling Harry Potter or Indiana Jones. <laughs> On a serious note, Dr. Boyd cares very deeply about his students, not just their academic career, but their families and their future. This is evidenced by the number of his students that are in the audience today. Dr. Boyd. It has been a pleasure to know you, to learn from you, observe you, and to share a glass of wine with you. I wish you many more years to be the great human being that you are. Happy birthday, Dr. Boyd. Uh, last but not least is Diane, who I think you all know. Does that mean it's ready? <laughs> no. I'm good? All right. Um, I'm scared to death up here. Anyway, I really, really um, want to tell you that Bob, Bob has changed my life in such a good way. It's, every day is just wonderful with him, and I'm really fortunate. Oh, my God. Um, he's a really genuine person. There's nothing phony about him. He, he lives his life the way he wants to with all the goodness in his heart for everyone. I didn't want to get remarried. This is my second marriage. And I'd met Bob in a skier club thing. And um, I just saw him at the party and I started talking to him to tell him about this skiing club because I had heard that he likes to ski. Well, he didn't really care about the skiing. He just wanted to go with a bunch of women, I think, to have some fun. But that was the start of my adventures with him, and I've had many, many. Um, and the one thing that I want to tell you about him, how sweet he is and how, how he thinks things through, we often go traveling, and there's, he'll get tired. He's a person that needs to take a nap every day. And he'll just lay down on the ground or on a bench, he, and he looks like a homeless person. And I said, Robert, you know, that doesn't look like a very dignified person. He said, but look at the way I'm dressed. If, I, if I'm dressed like this, I can lay anywhere, and no one will think that I'm a homeless person. <laughs> so it's, it's always something cute out of his mouth, and he is very kind to my family and my children. Uh, they love him, and they participate in our life, and he keep, brings them into our life, and, and he's really a father figure for them, which is really, really kind. And that's, that's about it. Um, I, want you, I want to thank him for being the man he is and for being my husband. <laughs> 